Hi, I'm Jerry Detweiler with a video blog for DebtConsolidationCare.com. Today I'm interviewing Steve Rhodes. Steve is the get out of debt guy. And I actually met Steve over a decade ago when he was starting one of the, what would go on to become one of the most successful credit counseling agencies in the country. And now he helps people through his website, getoutofdebt.org. Thanks, Steve, for joining me. Hey, Jerry, it's my pleasure. And you know what? It has been over a decade. In fact, it's probably been almost 15 years. Oh, don't date us. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Can I edit that out? <laughs> well, Steve, one, thing, one of the things I've always l admired about you is that you really tell it like it is. And so today I want to talk about one of your posts. You have a post called The Honest and Unvarnished Truth About Getting Out of Debt. And I want to talk about that post because it's pretty provocative. I know for most people, debt is extremely stressful and agonizing, and there are a lot of moral and ethical issues that come into play. But you say debt is just debt. Explain what you mean. Well, people attach all sorts of meanings to their financial problems. They think that they are somehow losers or failures, and they make bad decisions based upon what they think other people will think about them. And I always find it ironic that in the business world, things like bankruptcy are applauded and rewarded on Wall Street as being uh, the appropriate and logical action that a company should take. And yet when it comes to, to personal finances, consumers are easily manipulated and fooled into taking other actions, not that it's in their best interest, but it's in the best interest of the company that's selling them whatever that widget is. Well, you know, one of the comments I often hear, Steve, when I'm talking to creditor groups or even the news media, you know, they'll they will say, well, when people don't pay their bills, it hurts all of us. So, so what do you say to that argument? Well, I, I say that if a creditor is being hurt because some people aren't paying, people who can't afford to pay aren't paying, then they haven't priced their product accordingly. Because a product needs to be sold, uh, and this has always the, been the way it has been, is a creditor needs to price a credit product uh, so that it includes an appropriate amount of losses. And they know what those losses are, and that's what's factored into the interest rate. The interest rate is actually a calculation that involves the cost of money, profit, and approximate losses. Now, the people that we're talking about here who should consider bankruptcy, who need to take a good, honest, unvarnished look at their situation, are people who otherwise don't have a solution to their debt. You know, these are the folks that are draining the retirement plans just to make a few more months payments. Well, and I think that's what you're referring to in the post when you talk about the ultimate sin that tempts us when, it's, when we're getting out of debt. Explain what you mean by that. Well, people are afraid of the collection company calling. They're afraid of what the collector might think of them. They're afraid of what their neighbors might think if they had financial problems. And so because of that emotional fear, what they wind up doing is draining their 401ks, draining their IRAs, draining all their, their retirement money in order to not satisfy the debt, but to continue making payments. And the only thing that happens then is you're out of money, but you're not out of debt. Yeah, I, I've seen that so many times, and so many consumers wind up in bankruptcy anyway, and they at least would have had the money they really desperately need for retirement had they gotten help for that situation sooner. Well, that, so, money, that money is money that is saved for when you are least likely to be able to earn. So when you make a knee-jerk reaction and you blow through that money now when you're 40 or 50 or 60, you are not going to be able to easily replace that money. And then the only thing that's going to happen is that when you get old enough where you can't work, uh, you know, what are you going to do? You don't have that money anymore. And I'm afraid for some people it's going to be really tough times. Yeah, I agree. So, so what do you say to someone who's, who's conversing with you through your website, for example, and they're saying, you know, I'm really struggling, I want to do the right thing, but I'm, I'm having a hard time paying my bills. How, what do you say to those folks? Well, the first thing I ask them is, do you have a greater responsibility to repair the past or to fix the future? Because it's one thing to want to repay your debt because you feel like you have a moral, religious, ethical uh, opportunity so. But you also need to consider the implications and the sacrifices uh, that are going to be created if you choose to go down that path. For example, the family, I mean, Jerry and I, you, you've both seen these examples. Somebody who decides that they're going to repay their debt at all costs and in doing that, they're living just barely month to month. They can't afford to save. There's no emergency fund. Um, they're living in an area which is not very safe. 
And the whole reason they're doing this is because they want to try to repair the past. So let's get to the basics first. What is the goal that you want to achieve? That's always my first question. Okay, and then after you look at the goal you want to achieve, then, I mean, beyond getting out of debt, I imagine for a lot of people it feels pretty bleak, like I'm never going to have a future. Well, it does feel bleak. I mean, I, I went bankrupt myself in 1990, and uh, it sucks. Uh, but the bottom line to it is, um, is it appropriate for you? Do you want to get strung down a path that is not appropriate for you and lose more money and more time, or do you want to start your life over immediately? Now, for example... Let's say that you engage in uh, some solution that takes you years down the road and you're still working on repairing your debt. Now, if you had actually considered bankruptcy and gone bankrupt now, uh, most people, over 75% of people, qualify for a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Their debt is eliminated in a few months and they can begin to repair their credit immediately. Now, some people say, you know, I'm, I'm a loser. I filed bankruptcy. And I have to be honest, at one point in my life, I actually felt like that too. But the more I looked into it and the more situations I saw, I realized that two things. I realized, number one, if businesses can be rewarded for bankruptcy and it's an appropriate thing for them, why isn't it for consumers? And number two, I realized the way that I was feeling was about my internal feelings and not about the world. Now, I, I went bankrupt in 1990, I told you that, I've told the world, and I've, I've told it for years, uh, but for 10 years or so, I didn't tell the world, I was ashamed how people would think, and you know what, not only did I tell my friends that I went bankrupt, but it's all over the web, the newspapers, everybody knows it, and you know what, my life has not changed one bit. <laughs> So yeah. um, it, it, it doesn't take you down a dark path, but what does take you down a dark path are falling for false debt relief promises, fa uh, falling for these incredible benefits of we can get you out of debt in 12 months or um, sign up now and we will invalidate your credit contracts or sign up now and pay nine thousand dollars and we'll teach you how you can trip up the debt collector and we'll sue them and eliminate your debt these are all uh, um, almost all unequivocally these are all scams to separate you from your remaining money yeah and unfortunately it's all too common today yeah and you know bankruptcy attorneys don't bite and even if you decide even if you say i'm never filing bankruptcy you owe it to yourself and you owe it to your family to go talk to a bankruptcy attorney and find out the facts. Instead of making assumptions and judgments, find out the facts, sleep on it, and then think about whether or not bankruptcy is appropriate for you. The, the thing that I always hear, Jerry, is if I go bankrupt, I'm not going to get credit for 10 years, I'll never get credit again, I'll never be able to buy a house or a car, and that's just simply not true. Uh, yeah. you, you can get, in fact, um, if you do a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, you'll get your discharge notice in a few months, and very shortly thereafter, I mean within weeks, you will start to get new credit offers. And it's easy to rebuild your credit. And once you rebuild your credit, and once your debt is gone and you're able to save again, you'll have a down payment, you can buy a house, a car. Uh, it's not, it's not the, the stigma that we hear. And the people who are promoting that stigma are typically uh, debt collectors who are trying to manipulate you into pain and our own fear based upon what people say rather than what they do. Yeah. Well, Steve, like I said, you always tell it like it is, and I really appreciate your time today. And for anyone who's watching, make sure you check out Steve's post at getoutofdebt.org because you can learn about the unvarnished truth about getting out of debt in more detail. And if you have questions about your credit, you can visit debtconsolidationcare.com.